so then going ahead so today we'll we'll talk about parallel processing okay and then we'll also talk about this blocking mechanisms so so far we know parallel development right we know like team the collaborations how does that happen how multiple teams can work in parallel so using teamed applications using branches merging solving conflicts so all that is part of the parallel development and then one more other aspect is your check ins check outs and private edit so that also handles parallel development to an extent okay so this is parallel processing now what is this parallel processing means it it happens in parallel and this is not regarding the development so this is not during development rather this is during the execution of your application how does your application execute for processes that run in parallel so one aspect of this is i can use the concept of parallel process on the stage level right so we we have that option i can add in processes that run in parallel so all the processes on my stage yes they can be the sequential or they can be in parallel right depending upon the uh, dependencies and all but this is more likely that the processes are quite simple there's no repetition in it or it just execute once so for example there is an onboarding stage here okay. again there is a stage for onboarding and for example i might have some process okay so generally in the onboarding maybe i verify the process okay so this is part of some hr okay as part of hr activities verify documents and then bank account and sort of stuff similarly in parallel i can have the it looking after the infra and uh, you know the laptops and stuff so provide infra okay. for example provide laptops and there could be another process for admin to grant my access Okay, so this is part of the admin. Okay, something like issue ID or grant access and stuff. Okay, so this is also called parallel processing only because all these three processes can run in parallel. Good, but provided they don't have any dependencies, correct? So I think yes, they are all independent of each other. HR activities is carried by HR team. infra is provided by the it team whereas access is provided by the admin so there are different people working on it and the processes are independent of each other so i can handle it using this parallel process on the stage okay. but what if my processes are a little more complex there's a lot of repetition involved or i i need some other different levels of uh, you know um, more granular level control is required so I, i need such sort of things like for example now if i would like to uh, add in one more stage suppose some resolution okay okay which which does not have anything just that it is a simple resolution now when does my transaction come to resolution uh, stage so is it after just any any of hr activities provide in for our grant access if any of it would complete or is it mandated that all of this have to complete any guesses should it be that i should wait until all of the processes are complete here all of the processes processes yes right it has to be like even though they are in parallel 
I should wait until all the processes are complete and only then I can proceed to the next stage. For example, if I would like to just show this. Mm, I think I'll directly jump to uh, the inter yeah, or probably we'll, we'll go to the release offer directly. We'll jump. release offer okay so now I, I see issue IDs as part of one of the parallel process now I see three open assignments are there part of three processes now if I advance the case to the next stage which means issue ids is part of the i think admin so this process is complete okay now did the system move to resolution no it, it's still on the onboarding it's still on the onboarding it did not move to resolution what is it waiting for it's waiting for the two parallel process which is one is verify docs and other is provide laptops. Let us go with verify docs. Okay, let me open this process. Now one process is complete. The other process regarding verify docs is part of HR activities. Right. So yes, two open assignments are there once I finish this process. So is the system into resolution? Not yet. It still says provide laptops is pending. And once I finish this, only then the case moved further. Right? I was not able to configure that if the verification of, of documents is done, please proceed to resolution. I was not able to set anything like that. Right? So those granular level of controls are missing on this. And if in case I, I want to iterate on few things, I, would, I wouldn't I would be able to do it here. This parallel process is more like a limited access that I have or limited scope that I have. But in order to handle more complex scenarios, that's when we go for using separate shapes for this. And they are part of, again, they are also part of parallel processing in the applications. So we would be talking about three different new shapes regarding this parallel processing. Okay. And where we can achieve a lot of granular level control. Let's see what are those. Okay. All right. So here we will be talking about split join, split for each, and spin off. Okay. So we'll talk about three different shapes here and the process into which you are adding these shapes is considered the main process and rest of the processes are called sub process so that's how the naming conventions okay i think we'll look at split join okay so what is split join you're splitting the process and then you're joining it back again right so that's what you're doing splitting the process first and then you are joining it back now how does this work is let's take a simple uh, example where you have applied for a loan okay so when you apply for a loan um, initially you you provide in all the details you provide the you know the, I mean, the site or the home on, onto which you are taking a loan. So all of these details and documents are provided. Now there are different teams to assess you, correct? 
So one, I mean, a lot of underwriting happens to assess you. So let's assume uh, the background verification team would, would check your background, right? as in uh, your address details, your you know, all those um, your job related, I mean, the qualification details. So all of that is verified by the background team. Okay, and the loan team would would be looking out for your uh, you know property is the property value uh, the actual value that is quoted or not right where is it located is it actually a, a building or not so they they would value your property so there's a property valuation team that looks after this okay? then there might be an underwriter team which looks after your your credit scores your past uh, uh, loan history what is your repayment history? So all that is checked by the underwriting team. And each of them will have their own process. Right? Loan, uh, I mean, property valuation team will have their own process. There will be different people who would be working on it. An underwriting team's process could be different. Right? But towards the end, if all of they say, yes, go ahead, only then your case can move further. Right? So until unless or or at least the underwriting team should say okay, only then your uh, loan request can proceed further. Okay. So the thing is, we would be able to design processes in parallel. And we will also be able to decide when the case should move further. When all the sub processes are complete, or only are, are you looking at any specific one, or at least any two of them are complete, would you proceed? Right. So you you can choose that option. I mean, we will be able to you know take that privilege when it comes to split join. I think we'll go ahead. We'll do this directly. We'll see how it works. Yeah, so let me, I think I'll uh... yeah, let me open this process. The process looks like this. Okay. Now, um, I think I'll just add in one more stage here. And just drag it towards the front. Okay. Right, so now I, I have a sample process. I'm just adding some sample collecting. Okay, mm, all right. So now let's see. Let us add in some uh, split join shape here. How do I add it? Just open the process, and it is part of the advanced options, advanced shapes. It's not part of a regular shape, so you see it on the advanced. Yes, here is your split join. So you see the flow is being split, and then you're joining it. Let me open. Right. So here, what do I see? Is first the join conditions. So when should I join back with the main flow? Is it when all my sub processes are complete or any of them is complete, which means at least one of them is complete. I'll proceed. Or are you looking at some? 
so when it is some we have other conditions you can decide which one of it has to be completed or you have a condition or something you can decide that. for now let me put it to all okay then what you have is the flow rules which means your actual process right so uh, let me add a process okay i'll name it up from process a okay s process a i mean like let me name it sub process a. okay and you have different options on how you would like to configure your flow is it on the current scope i mean is it on work dash recruitment if yes you can give it if you would like to add an another page i mean if it's part of some other class or it's part of an embedded page then you you can give it appropriately it could be part of a data page or something so is there any flow on the data page you would like to have yes so this is all related to the flow definition as in where is it how are you using it you have it on the current page itself so let me Okay. So I think I'll go ahead and and create one flow, a simple one. Hmm. Or I think I'll just use any of these. Hmm. I think I'll use grant access. Okay. So there's. a flow for grant access that we have just designed right i mean this this one that we have just configured grant access right so it it is also part of the work dash recruitment only so i can use it so let me use grant access and would you like to mention any uh, you know any case type and all for it yes you can do it you can select the the case type that you want to associate this flow with I mean by default as it's on the current page anyways it will be picking up work dash recruitment only right but if you use any other uh, embedded pages or other pages then you might need to associate this but for now i i don't need to do it and let me add in one more maybe sub process b and this again i would like to use provide info okay so i've added two uh, shapes i mean i've added two floors for the split join let me think here i'll i'll add one more assignment and then just name it post sub process assignment okay i have a sub process where i mean I, in fact i have two sub process which is one is grant access one is provide info okay and my criteria is only after both of these complete because i mentioned the join condition as all only after both of these are complete my case will move further so that's my criteria so let's check is is the shape even visible here it should be Yes, I split split join. So let us run the transaction. Collect sample info. Okay. Let me advance the case. And what do I see? Is I see provide laptops, and I also see an open assignment here. Okay. Advance it. 
then what does it say the next step has been routed so this is more likely similar to your parallel process where until all of it is complete the case will not move further right but here we we see the advantages are that you can reuse flows from any context okay it can be from the case flow it can be from other uh, cases or it can be from other embedded uh, properties also so that's the advantage so once i proceed with issue ids only after this is complete i move on to the post sub process assignment right? because we have designed it until unless all of it is complete i cannot proceed further my quest it could be just any when any of this is complete either one of it is complete my transaction can just proceed all right so once i advance this once my provide laptop is complete so one process complete so i am already on to the post sub process <laughs> Sir, so it can uh, be any process, any process, anything. Yeah. So if my criteria is even one of the process complete, could be any one, then I I will choose any here. Right. So I said any. So I might have n number of process, but at least one of it is complete. I I can proceed from. Okay. Or if you are very specific that some condition should be completed. Okay. so i can define a when condition right it could be a flag or it could be anything related to your uh, you know a process it could be anything right? so i can define my when condition and if this is true okay if, if your when condition is met only then my my case will proceed further otherwise it it will be uh, on hold until all the process would come or at least until your condition is met okay so this is the level of control that we could have when you are using these advanced shapes I mean, clear with this split join you are yes. splitting the process joining it back onto the flow okay so this holds good when you have a single input and on the same input you are handling multiple processes like for example your loan application is there you are just one candidate for the loan and all the teams are working on that one candidate now mm -hmm. let's take the exact opposite scenario when i have 1000 candidates to be interviewed for a job okay. let's assume 1000 candidates are being interviewed for a job so all the candidates have to go through the same process correct all of them should go through written test all of them should go through interview right maybe a technical discussion and then finally a, a hr discussion so the processes are going to be the same here whereas the candidates are different so i will iterate the list of candidates for the processes so that's part of your split for each you are splitting the sub process for multiple candidates it's like a a list of records are there and each item on the record has to be repeated for the same sub process okay so that's where your split for each comes into picture so let's see now instead of split join i would like to use a split for each you are splitting the process for each item so that's what split for each says okay, you see there's this uh, repeat symbol the iteration symbol means that you are iterating it So the first thing it would ask is on what property should i iterate it okay on what property are we doing this okay student uh, list 
okay by this time will the student list be populated mm, i think it will be empty for now let me just put it okay so on what property am i iterating this process on student list if you are talking about interview a candidate list maybe okay and here you would be asked only one single flow there's only one flow here but it is executed multiple times depending upon how many entries you have on this list i think i'll do one thing i let this be uh, i'll not touch this instead i think by this time we are getting the uh, list populated is it on customer info no i think on uh, okay personal info is it um, i think we are we are populating a list somewhere isn't it yeah it was on get educational info educational info is it okay but it did not get saved last time ah right so i think i'll just put it on uh, customer info itself and just correct it it did not get saved right mm -hmm. okay. uh, what is a candidate list no oh, when property is also not created Uh, which one? Let me take as a student. Student one. Student is it? Okay. Yeah, student. Okay, it has got some records. I mean, with a with a zero uh, items on the list, what would we iterate on? So let's see. At least like three to four records. Okay, four records are there. Should be good. Or is it not saved again? Okay, mm -hmm. there's a student list to data. So I would expect like four records on the student list, but is that added? I still doubt. Right. Then I think I'll do one thing. I'll add it in collective. Student list data, yes.
Okay, then I think anyways, we have the list data already on the screen. I think um, we can directly no, instead we'll remove this. And we'll, we'll add the script for each. So what is the input? My input for this is going to be student list data. Okay. So, and then the class is populated. What is the flow that you would like to repeat? And um, let us. So where is it getting created? If you observe this uh, flow or the sub process, it is being created on the data dash student class, not on the work dash. Why? Because the entities that you're operating is on data dash student. So sub process. Uh, mm, I've just named it as a process assignment. Nothing much on this. Okay. Now, now you see here again. I have uh, join conditions, right? Where I have all, I have any, I have iterate, I have some. So all any and some we are aware of it all as in until all the students in this list are complete. I will not proceed with the main flow. Okay. Any of it. Suppose out of 100 candidates, if one of the candidates transaction is complete, I can proceed further. But that does not work for my scenario practically. It doesn't work that way. And I don't even need to interview all the hundred maybe because my requirement is I need 10 CSAs not 10 CSAs and 5 LSAs that's what I'm looking for okay if after probably after 55 interviews if I've already got my requirement done I got all 10 CSAs 10 CSAs 5 LSAs I've already got them so I don't need to continue the rest of the interviews right I, I might reject i mean I, I might stop the uh, recruitment process till then okay. so probably all and any might not work for my scenario but i can go with some so when you use some what is your condition when would you like to exit when probably my count has reached uh, you know 10 csss 10 cssss 5 lss if that is my count I would like to exit my iteration. Okay. So you can have it on when there could be a condition or it could be on a count also. If after like 75 interviews, I would like to stop. So you, know, you can, uh, when you give it a count, it is asking after how many successful transactions or until how many successful process should I complete should I stop maybe I can define uh, and after 50 iterations I would like to stop okay and 50 iterations with the status as uh, accepted or selected so I can design this according to my requirement okay so that's one thing that you have with some where your conditions can be given and the other interesting option is iterate. Okay, if you give iterate, so you can decide when you should exit the iteration. Okay. So it's more like, uh, you know, when would you like to exit your iteration? So this is again your condition that you can mention, conditional based. Uh, Stop or this, this is more like a breakpoint. So when should I come out of the loop? Okay. 
here also you can define on a conditional basis. So there are two when's here if you observe. This is for exiting your transaction. So when should I come out of the loop? Okay, this is for exiting. And this when is for starting. So this would be there for almost all the scenarios you can see. Is there a condition for me to start the sub process? If yes, then you can go for this when. Otherwise, if it's empty, by default, the process would start. And you can see this when for all the scenarios. Join all is there. Yes. When should I start it? Any is there. Again, even for any also. When should I start? So this when is for starting. The conditional when comes into picture when you use some or uh, item. I think we will go with all. So I have a sub process. Yes. Okay. So all candidates on the list have to go through the sub process. Okay. You are splitting it for each item on the list. Let's see how it looks like. In the earlier scenario, we have different people, we have different processes. But now the process is same, but they are all operated on multiple instances of a list. Okay, so I have four items on the list and let us submit. Hmm. So sub process assignment. So I see four sub process assignments that are pending. Now until unless I complete all of them, my transaction will not proceed further. So I can see three are still pending. Right? Because I've mentioned all so until unless all the 100 candidates are interviewed, I am not going to continue next. Okay, probably the 99th candidate might be a good LSA for me. So I would like to finish all their interviews. Only then I would like to move forward. Okay. So in case if it's any. One of it is complete, I'm good. But this, this, and probably for the interview scenario, this might not work at all. But still, let us just have a look. Okay, so four candidates are there on the list, but yet if one of it is complete, either one is complete, then I see I have moved on to the next assignment or the next subsequent action that is there. Right here, I don't need to wait until the others are complete. Yeah, so that's the advantage of having this any. Right. In most of the scenarios, we, we don't use any because it's like a very random scenario. Anything can complete and I can just proceed as, as a, you know, a random scenario. We wouldn't use it much. Okay. All is used and then some conditional based ones are used. Clear with this? Split for each? Yes. Okay. So then we'll see another one. There's one more uh, you know, functionality, you can say, which is spin-off. So in the earlier two shapes, uh, split for each and spin-off, they are more like sub-processes. I mean, they, they, they were kind of, uh, you know, they, they had some dependency on it. And I mean, like when my case has to proceed further, I will check these statuses whether they are complete or not, and then I will move forward, right? But here with spin-off, this goes in parallel with your main transaction. I mean, with the main flow, you can have your sub flow running in parallel. They can be independent of each other. There's no dependency. I don't need to wait for my sub process to complete. They can just run in parallel. 
like when your candidate is onboarded you can have a bgv process running in parallel right i don't need to wait for his onboarding or not for verifying his documents for providing laptops and all i don't need to wait for his bg your spin off will create a separate flow for itself it runs parallel with your main flow for example let us look at it spin off doesn't have any separate uh, shape instead Yeah. A spin off would be available on your flow, uh, I mean, directly on the flow level. Is there a sub process here? Okay, yeah. So this is anyways a sub process, but let us use a normal sub process instead of this. So generally, what does a sub process mean? Is yes, there is a dependency. I mean, until unless your sub process complete, the main transaction will not proceed. So that's how the dependency is. But Let us see. Um, okay, let me give this provide now. Huh? So let us look at the normal uh, how the sub process would work. Okay, so here. Yes, provide laptops is there. Now, until unless I finish provide laptops, I cannot move forward. I think that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Until this is complete, I cannot proceed with sub process. I mean, post sub process or the next actions cannot be taken care. Right? But on the sub process. I have an option called spin off so what it does is the main flow would continue along with that my spin off flow will continue as parallel this doesn't have a separate shape just that it is a feature no so you see the flow you know uh, diversified like i have two arrows now earlier it was just a sub process earlier once i remove this it was just a sub process it has to be completed and then the case progresses but now the case diversify all right so let's see how this is going to work and probably it, it would be good if we could add in uh, one more step or so we'll do that We provide laptops, is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, now my infra has two steps. So just for us to know and whether it's being executed or not. Okay, so two assignments are there. And what about this? You see? Sub process. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now this looks good. Okay. 
okay so i am directly on to post sub process i did not even reach the you know provide laptop so you see that's more like an open assignment it is still in pending i mean it is yet to be completed but that did not stop my flow right so i can just advance with this i can go ahead with uh, you know rest of the aspects i was able to go to get personal info i'm almost on the submission stage and yet i see provide laptops is still pending if required yes i can open this provide laptop along with the main transaction you are able to do it see i can advance this case and i can proceed and if i i would like to leave it i mean probably i want to pause it i i can do and i can just go with the main flow also i'm on the experience details let us advance this okay there's this uh, sla here okay. now i'm already on the release offer okay now i'm on in onboarding might be yes i'm in onboarding where i have the earlier uh, parallel process also defined on the case and now one which is part of my sub flow right i think provide uh, software is part of the sub flow now i can go ahead i can complete it so that's like you are running it like an entirely different flow it's completely a parallel flow to your main flow that you are doing do we need to complete the sub flow also i mean uh, the, uh, the sub the sub flow was not uh, stopping us from executing the main flow it was still correct. end if suppose so correct by before closing the case is it required that we should complete it or we can leave mm -hmm. it like that it's not mandatory not it's not mandatory but yes you have to complete it for example let let's see this scenario where i'll let the process be i wouldn't complete it okay i'll do one thing maybe i'll i'll remove it here okay but still it will be a parallel process for me okay because this is still a sub process for me yes is it pointing to hmm no i think we changed it right where is this so what is that we have added provide uh, no provide infra okay infra okay it has got provide laptop so it's okay hmm but why is this showing only one here i see provide infra Let me just do it once again. I don't know. Maybe I'll just change this. okay ah oh, okay all right so let's check this now i will let the sub process be i wouldn't con con complete it but let's check if the system throws any error okay i'm already in the post sub process provide laptops 
friendly. Okay, issue IDs is part of uh, okay grant access. Let's proceed and verify docs. Okay, let's complete verify docs. Ideally, the case should move further. Yes, it's on the resolution, whereas provide laptops is still ending. My subflow that we have spin off is still pending. Let us advance this. Yes. So I see the case is completed. The provide laptops is still on. Okay. So ideally, there is no restriction for me to complete it mandatorily. But I mean, as for the business requirements, we we would generally uh, you know finish it or wrap the uh, sub process. Before your fine, <clears throat> your main case is closed. As for the business requirement, but technically, yes, I can have it still running even though my case is complete. Yeah, clear with this. Yes. Right. So there will so, be no error message or anything to complete no, it. It will that's still that's remain. Yes, see, nothing is there. It just still showed this in my optional actions. Okay. My uh, other actions. Sorry. Thanks, Nain. Thank you. Have a good day.